Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Last video we built and installed the uh, table saw base. It now looks more like a contractor saw. And in this video we're going to finish this up and work on the back side of the saw, which I'm going to rebuild the uh, outfeed table and put in a pneumatic actuator blast gate to the table saw. A lot of stuff in this video, so stay tuned and enjoy. So this is the blast gate that I'm going to use for my pneumatic uh, cylinder and I 3D printed a part, looks like this, slaps right on to here and this should go on here somehow. So I need to drill a hole here for this once I figure out where I'm going to put this actuator. And then I need to drill a few holes here to hold it to the black gate. We'll tighten that all down when I, once I get it figured out. Here's a linear actuator, it's pneumatic. And uh, you know, a couple airlines come in here, extends a piston in and out and I 3D printed this bracket which I'll leave a link to in the description for Thingiverse. Uh, this is not my design, I got this off of another video and matter of fact everything I'm doing here is off of that video and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. He explains everything pretty good and uh, gives you links for just about everything as well so um, in fairness uh, he deserves the credit for it but I'm going to use it. So this linear actuator pops in there. You got that old nut on there. Uh, clips into this really well. It's a very well designed uh, piece. And then uh, down here you got room for wire ties. Which my wire ties are probably too big. I'll have to go get some smaller ones. But there's a wire tie channel in there and it'll just clamp that in. So I just need to bolt that up and uh, figure out where it's going to land. Minus the few air leaks that I got here. Uh, basically I got an air line coming in to this solenoid. Two lines coming out to um, cut off switches which I really don't think I need quite honestly so I'd probably eliminate those. Uh, but this does allow me to go out fast or in slow or vice versa. I can test it by hitting a little trigger. And it seems to be doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. So all I have to do is mount it to the saw, fix the air leaks, and right, so the blast gate goes on here. Solenoid switch. I think I'm gonna put way up here. Find out where this is gonna go. Which is actually, you know, kind of like that right there, right on top of the blast gate. Now we need to figure out the hole in this.
<laughs> broke, broke my wire ties. Leave yourself some tolerance. <laughs> Okay, this ain't working for me. I just don't like the way the hoses are running. Uh, ideally, you know, you can run flat against the saw, and that's what I wanted. But I mounted the block wrong, so I'm gonna have to move it. It sucks, but whatever. What really sucks is I've already moved it once. <laughs> so this will be a whole lot cleaner look when, I'm, when it's done. So I got an inlet, an outlet, or extend and retract, however you want to look at it. Got some flow valves, and I got my solenoid up there. The solenoid gets plugged into the wall, or in my case, eventually I'm going to wire this directly to my table saw switch, so when my switch comes on, the blast gate opens. Should switch shuts off, blast gate, blast gate will close. So for now, it's just going to plug into the wall and uh, test it and everything. So I need one more hose, and this goes to my compressor. There you go. Have to play with the uh, air pressure a little to get it tweaked in. But system is working. Okay, so this is the last time we're gonna see the back of the table saw. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what's going on. When you turn the saw on with the power switch up front, the blast gate opens. When you turn the power saw off, the blast gate closes. I got a dust line coming from my uh, dust collector in, right into that uh, blast gate. It's wide off to this blast gate, which I can manually operate, and it may end up on actuators in the future, I don't know. And then I got a power cord running up to the saw and the compressor and um, my router table. I haven't plugged it in yet. Um, within the actuator itself, there's two blue lines coming up to the solenoid that runs off 110 volts. That's why I was able to plug it right into the uh, power switch or tap right into the power switch and then out to the compressor with this blue line. I uh, just did a little wire management and tied everything to the table saw itself. If I want to roll around the table saw or move it in the future, I got to disconnect the uh, hose clamp and unplug it here and then unplug the line from the compressor. And then I'm free to move it wherever I want. For the most part, this saw is going to stay right here, so I am okay with that. I will 
bring the camera angle down a little bit just so you can see an overall picture. The uh, bracket that holds the actuator was 3D printed and the bracket that goes onto the blast gate was 3D printed. Everything else was purchased as is. And I just put an extra bolt back here in this hole just to further stabilize that whole uh, actuator so it don't move. I'm able to operate it over here because the solenoid has a button that I can operate it. Alright, I think I was going to rebuild my outbeat table, but I think I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to beef it up a little bit. Uh, what I mean by that, I'm going to put some beefier legs here and put some stretchers, you know, uh, maybe three stretchers down the length of it just to keep the flex out of it a little bit but for the most part I think I'm just going to cut about three and a half four inches off of this in uh, give me a nice square edge to play with plus I don't have to really you know dismantle all this I can just cut it off and then rebuild some legs and put a stretcher here at the front make it a little nicer beefier and I may even paint it the same color I painted the table saw base uh, just to uh, you know make it match so for the most part uh, I like this out feed table um, I'm gonna put leveling feet on this end so I can actually level it now right now I got wheels on it um, not real sure why I did that in the, in the past but um, I got wheels down there now, but I'll put leveling feet on it this time. I'm really digging the hole here for a scrap bin. I've just got a scrap pan under here. Uh, puts my scrap wood in there and I use that in my fire pit. Um, everything's lined up. I really like the channel in between the table saw and the outfeed table so I can make cross cut sleds with my circular saw. Overall, this is doing what I need it to do. and there's no real change to no real reason to change it uh, I'm just gonna spruce it up a little bit make it a little stronger a little nicer and be done with this Okay, so now you can see what I'm going for as far as replacing the legs on this. A lot more beefier, just stronger construction. Uh, four by fours with leveling feet. A couple two by fours are going across for stretchers. And then I'll just flip this right down here and replace that one. Be a lot more sturdy and it will have leveling. So I'm going to glue and assemble this and we'll be done with that.
All right, so that wraps this video up. Uh, rebuilt the uh, Alpine table, much stronger, a little shorter, but I'm okay with that. It gives me a little bit more room on the other side, and but it's so much stronger, and I'm so happy with it right now. Um, and the pneumatic blast gate is working out fantastic. I've been using it on and off all day, and uh, so far no problems with it. And hopefully that's. Uh, it's going to be a good deal for me. So anything that I uh, feel that you need a link to, I'll put it in the description. Uh, there's some videos that I referenced and some product that I referenced. Um, it's all in the link in the description below. So that's it for this one. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next time.